Good day everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Teacher Eyes TV! Finally, we are back for our newest episode of Teacher Eyes Channel. Yes, masyado nangimisi si Teacher Eye for the past several months. Kaya ngayon, nagbabalik tayo para sa ating bagong episode. And for this episode, we will be talking about one of the important tools that we need to use in entrepreneurship. And what is this? This is the SWOT Analysis. What is SWOT Analysis? SWOT Analysis is a tool that is used to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of a particular business. It is a tool that is used in making decisions pertaining to matters like management, production, financing, and even marketing. Now, the question here is, how does SWOT analysis help entrepreneurs in making decisions? Answer, well, SWOT analysis identifies uh, the factors that, you know, entrepreneurs have total control with and the factors in which they cannot control. And when you talk about all this, we talk about the internal and external factors. Strengths and weaknesses would refer to internal factors affecting the business. And these are the factors in which you know, entrepreneur, entrepreneurs have total control with. While opportunities and threats are outside factors, external factors, wherein entrepreneurs do not have total control with. Now let's talk about the first letter in the SWOT, and that is S. S stands for strengths. What do you mean by this? Strengths are the inner characteristics or behavior within the business that make it possible to achieve business goals. And for us to know the strengths of the business, we have to study the following factors. The first one is presence of cheap and abundant raw materials. What do I mean by this? Well, if we have sources of materials that are affordable, then our production cost will be lower. What is production cost? Well, when you say production cost, it refers to the amount of money that we spend in producing a certain product. So, if the production cost is low, we can offer quality products also at a lower price. Effect of that, we will be able to give more customers to buy from us. That's the first one. Cheap and abundant raw materials. Number two, sufficient funds. What do you mean by this? The money that we need to sustain our business. You see, money is important to run the business. And even if, you know, we want to dream big and come up with a certain kind of business, a different offering that caters to more people, if we don't have enough fun to support our business, then we cannot do what we dream of. So, it is important that as we start the business, we have enough amount of money or capital or the funds to support our business. That is number two. The third determinant of strength is availability of technology. You know, friends, whether we like it or not, we now live in a world where technology plays a very significant role. Why? Because technology, updated technology, actually helps us to make things faster and easier. So, for example, having a dough maker for a bake shop or having an ice cream machine from an, for an ice cream parlor or maybe having high-powered uh, sewing machines and stitching machines for dressmaking shops. All these are kinds of technology that can help make work faster and more efficiently for entrepreneurs. That's the third one. We go to the fourth one, which is presence of skilled workers. Well, despite having technology, yes, I know that is important. But of course, we still need people to work for us. Hence, people who are experts, who are knowledgeable and skilled of doing a particular task in the business will be a very good advantage for the business. So therefore, we also consider that as a strength. With that, I want you to take note that it is important to have both presence of skilled workers and updated technology. 
Why? Well, because these two, they go hand in hand in coming up with the next determinant of strength in your business, which is quality products and services. That is right. Quality products and services are only produced and provided when you have very much qualified and skilled workers in your business and if you have updated technology as well. And why is this important? Providing these services and products which are high quality. Answer? Well, it's because definitely your consumers will keep on coming back to your establishment because they believe and they think that they, whatever they pay for is actually worth the price that they are receiving from you quality products and services. And you see, I want you to take note of the next determinant, which is also anchored with all this, so all this that I have mentioned, and that is management and technical skills and expertise of the entrepreneur. Even if you, do, you have all this, you know, the, the technology and skilled workers, and you as an entrepreneur doesn't have the technical skill, doesn't have the knowledge about business, still you will not be successful. You see, if you are knowledgeable of what you're doing, you can uh, think of more ways of innovating your products and your services. And no one can actually fool you for that matter. So, important management, technical skills, and expertise of the entrepreneur. And the last in our list for the determinants of stress is satisfied employees. Is that even important? That your, you know, your employees are satisfied? Answer, yes. Well, of course, your employees should be satisfied with the way you manage your business, with the way they are compensated in your business. Because satisfied employees will mean low turnover of your employees, meaning that they will not resign, they will not look for other jobs because they are already happy with what they are doing and what they are receiving. So if they are satisfied employees, it's not only retaining them, but it's motivating them to do better. And with that, it results to you coming up with really quality service for all. These are the determinants of strengths that will help the business to be successful. Now, let's talk about the second letter of SWOT, and that is W. W stands for weaknesses. What do you mean by this? Well, weaknesses are the internal characteristics of the business that may prevent it from reaching its business goals. And similar to strengths, there are also different determinants for this. One of them, poor quality service. Let's describe poor quality service. A poor quality service, one of those we can say is that the service is very slow. Another one, the products are not good. Another one, the employees are not able to do their job well. They don't even smile when they serve. These are what? Uh, descriptions of a service that is poor quality. And do you know the reason for having poor quality service? That could be because of number two determinant, which is weak management. You see, an entrepreneur should be able to lead the staff well, the business really well. And if I you know the management is weak, definitely service will also be weak because the entrepreneur doesn't know how to manage it well or how to direct the people well. The third one is the lack of skilled workers. Your skilled workers are your frontliners in your business. Therefore, if they are not knowledgeable and they are not skilled, they will definitely will not be able to provide good and excellent service to everyone. Then we go to the fourth determinant of weakness and that is irregular supplies. You see, how does irregular supply affect the business? Without the supply of your materials, there will be no production. There will be no service. There will be no transaction. There will be no sales. And therefore, there will be no profit. That is why it is very important that you have several suppliers where you get your, your materials, your ingredients need, or your tools, and everything that you need for your business so that your business will continue. Alright? So, the regular supply will actually be a what? A weakness for a business. The next one, number five, is high cost of production. Yes, you should have regular supplies, but you should also be able to find quality 
an abundant and cheaper supplies of these materials because it's like what I mentioned in the strings if the materials that you will use are expensive that will lead you to spend higher amount of capital or funds for that that means high cost of production if the production of cost is high the, the, the selling cost or the selling price of your product will also be high or expensive which should be difficult for you to sell to your consumers that is the fifth one we go to the sixth unattractive design of your store is that even important answer of course that is very important the store should be what attractive so that it can invite more customers to go to your store you see we look at how everything is placed, how everything is organized, even the use of colors, even the use of the decorations, they, mod, they actually matter a lot. Therefore, an attractive design is actually what? A kind of weakness. And these are all the six determinants of weaknesses. And you see, even if these are weaknesses, the entrepreneurs being able to determine or identify them they have the, the, the capacity, they have the opportunity to transform them into strengths because they're actually something that entrepreneurs can control. Transforming them into strengths will make the business reach its goal to be successful. Those are strengths and weaknesses. We go to the third letter of SWOT and this refers to opportunities. So, what are opportunities? Opportunities are the external factors of the business that entrepreneurs can make use of, that can take advantage of, in order to be successful. So, talking about determinants, if so, that the strengths and the weaknesses have their own determinants, opportunities also have its determinants. And the first one is the big demand for the product. There are products existing, but there is that big demand that's an opportunity. So, if an entrepreneur sees that, you know, a lot of people are looking for this product or service, that's a great opportunity to do this. That's the first one. The next determinant of opportunity is the scarcity of the product in the locality or maybe the absence of the product in the locality. There are no products being offered, but there is a big demand. That is an opportunity for an entrepreneur to seek for more suppliers and sources of this and sell it to that certain municipality or market. That's number two. The third is poor quality of existing products. What is the difference? Poor quality of existing products? There are products being offered in the community, but the quality of these products is poor. That's the opportunity of an entrepreneur to come up with maybe the same product line but improve and has the best quality. That is a big opportunity. And then the next one is favorable government policy. You know, there are times when, you know, the government comes up with different programs like maybe lending a certain, certain amount of capital to starting entrepreneurs so that they can run the business or put up the business. Or there are also some programs of the government in which they train, you know, people aspiring to be entrepreneurs so that they will be knowledgeable and skilled to run a particular business. Or maybe reducing the taxes that they will be em uh, employing or maybe uh, collecting from these entrepreneurs is another uh, favorable government policy. With all this offered in a community or in a certain country, that is an opportunity to actually start a good business. So these are the opportunities that, you know, entrepreneurs may take advantage of and be successful in the business. Now we go to the last of the SWOT, which is T, and T stands for threats. What do you mean by this? Threat stands for the different external conditions that are beyond the control of the entrepreneur. And similar to the strengths and the weaknesses and opportunities, threats also has its own, threats have its own uh, determinants. And the first one of those is the shortage of raw materials. When I say shortage of raw materials, there is really the lack or the absence of materials that you can use to produce the product or to provide the services. Why is that a threat? Definitely, when there are no materials to, to use, there will be no business and therefore there will be no profit. Business stops, failure happens. So that's number one, shortage of materials. Number two, entry of new competitors. 
this is something that you know entrepreneurs cannot control having so many competitors around and that requires an entrepreneur to be more innovative and creative because if not the entry of more competitors will actually cause the business to to fail or to go bankrupt because uh, these competitors might be able to get the market that this certain business already uh, has. That's number two. Then we have the next threat that is increasing cost of production. You know, all these materials becoming expensive and um, entrepreneurs do not have total control of this. When you have increasing cost of production, definitely, you know, the products will also be expensive and that will be difficult to sell. Okay, so that's the, the, the third one. The fourth one is unfavorable government laws. What are examples of this? Maybe imposing higher taxes among entrepreneurs or maybe uh, providing silly prices which are not uh, fair for entrepreneurs because they have been spending too much amount of money for that. These are unfavorable government laws. And with this, that you know, entrepreneurs cannot control, they may just end up closing their business because of uh, the lack of sufficient, sufficient funds to support the business. So that is why we call it a threat. The next one is that the, the presence of natural calamities and health emergencies. You know, floods, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or maybe health emergencies that may cause us to stop and be put into lockdown, just like what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. These are something that we cannot control. And these are threats that may affect the business to suffer from business failure and bankruptcy. And now we're down to the second to the last determinant of strength and that is the deteriorating peace and order. What do I mean by this? It refers to the existence of war and uh, conflicts in a community or maybe in the country. When there is war and conflict and protest uh, one after the other, it makes the business uh, encounter failure. It suffers from all these conflicts and therefore the businessman, the entrepreneur uh, encounters bankruptcy. That's one of the threats. And then the last among this is the emergence of unfair demands from workers and labor unions. Yes, that is right. There are times when uh, there are demands that, cannot, that entrepreneurs cannot provide. And this results to strikes and protests among and within uh, the employees that may cause the business operation to stop. And that may cause also the entrepreneur to suffer from bankruptcy. Something that, you know, entrepreneurs cannot control. All these are the determinants of threats that may lead the business to bankruptcy, something that is beyond control. And once again, my dear friends, all these are the determinants of the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of a particular business, which are essential in making decisions when putting up a business and when thinking of another product or service to be offered for your business. That's the discussion of our SWOT analysis. I hope that you learned something useful from the video that I shared with you today. And PLE teachers and home economics teachers and even students who are studying the subject, I hope that you got something meaningful and important that you can use for your lessons and your future businesses as well. If you like the video, I, I, I would request that you share and like this video to everyone that you know. And and for those who have not yet subscribed in my YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos and updates. Once again, this is me, Spackle, for Teacher Eyes TV. I'll see you again in our next videos. Thank you for watching!